Hello you lovely Mario Maker person, my name is Steve and welcome back. Today we continue our search for contraptions which forbid Mario to perform certain actions in Super Mario Maker. So far we've already discussed don't jump, don't turn around and don't touch the floor. But there is one last box we weren't able to check on our dangerous list of evil so far. And that's a working don't run contraption. So here's the thing, until recently I believe that there is no way to check at any given moment when a Mario is currently running or not and that it's impossible to wire this to a P-switch or a power block. But that was until recently, thanks to our new, very best friend, the off-screen note block and its completely strange properties. It's finally possible to build a contraption which reliably checks whether Mario is walking or running. So what we are going to do in this video is to take a look at a stage which features this contraption alongside tons of other really weird tricks which all abuse Mario Maker's loading logic. So are you ready? Let's do this! Okay, so first I want to take a look at the stage and afterwards I want to talk about how all the different contraptions work. Mario finds himself at the beginning of a small brick block bridge. There isn't really much going on here currently, but for some reason our plumber has this strange feeling that there is more to this room than it currently looks like. Once Mario left the pipe, he finds himself in a room which Bowser designed to teach Mario the don't run mechanic of this level. If Mario starts to run in this room, like he always does, a piece which is triggered and the exit of this room becomes blocked. Mario's only chance to proceed now is to take the pipe for which he entered this room again, but this pipe is now suddenly blocked as well. Weird. So our plumber is trapped in the tutorial room until he figures out that running is the problem and that he's easily able to leave this room if he only walks in here. It's really nice of Bowser that he always makes sure that Mario has a safe playground to learn the unique gimmicks of his levels. It would be so much easier for Bowser just to kill Mario a couple of times until he realizes how the stage works. But while Bowser definitely wants to get rid of Mario, it looks like he also wants to play it fair. Anyway, once Mario understood the core mechanic of the stage, he is allowed to proceed. Now he's in an area where running is lethal and collapses the floor. To Mario's left is a locked door, but luckily there aren't many other threats here. Once our plumber slowly walks through this doorway, he becomes trapped in this area. Hmm, it looks like he has to find another way out of here. But there is still not much going on here. I mean, yeah, there are a couple of piranha plants which try to burn him, but that's basically it. Why aren't there more threats? At the end of this room is a door, Mario is trapped in here once again and this door is the only way for Mario to progress further. But where does this door lead him to? It leads him to... to... um... to the exact same room again. But wait, something has changed, the door he took before is suddenly blocked but there is now a vine growing out of the ground. This vine gives Mario a red coin, the first of five which he needs in order to get the key. Oh, I see, Mario has to make his way back now through the same area through which he came, but now the level has slightly changed so that he's able to get the 5 red coins which were there all along. And all of this while he isn't allowed to run. Wow, it looks like Bowser got really creative here. The second red coin is in the small room where the piranha plants shot at him before and it's now reachable because a vine magically appeared. In this area a new vine spawned as well alongside with another terrifying piranha plant. Then there is another new vine and fire spitting plant which grants our plumber access to red coin number 4. This is the door which closed behind Mario when he passed it before but this time it does nothing. Hmm. Maybe the door broke when it was triggered before. Anyway, the last red coin is hidden at the beginning of the stage and now accessible because of this new vine. Collecting this red coin grants our plumber finally the key which he needs to open up this door. But where will this door take him to? Will he be entrapped in a dangerous minigame? Will he find himself in a room where the floor periodically disappears if Mario touches it? Will he face a boss fight? There is only one way to find out. The door leads Mario back to the beginning of the stage. Um, weird. He's now on top of the brick block bridge from before and as it looks he's trapped in this area. Oh! Looks like there was a hidden contraption which tested from which position Mario entered the room. Clever. Now Mario is finally able to take the pipe at the bottom and this pipe finally leads him to a don't run boss fight against Bowser Jr. 
In this area, the floor collapses once again as soon as Mario tries to run. So here he has to defeat Bowser's son in an unfair battle, while our plumber has to move really slowly and has to be careful not to destroy the floor by accident. Bowser Jr. is able to attack him as fast as he can. Luckily, Mario is so skilled at fighting Bowser Jr. that he is even able to beat him in this really unfair fight. Hooray! Once the fight is over, Mario can open this door, which leads him to a couple of power blocks, which he can then use to finally escape this horrific don't run level. And that's the stage. Ok, so there are four different tricks hidden in this stage which I quickly want to talk about. They all make heavy use of Super Mario Maker's really interesting loading priorities. So first let's talk about why the stage layout slightly changes the second time Mario makes his way through. That's because of a very simple trick. All of these vine growing blocks and piranha plants are spawn blocked in some way when Mario makes his way through it the first time. This piranha plant for example can't spawn because there is a spawn blocking block block directly below it. But there is also a bob omp close to it which is forced to explode the first time Mario walks through this area, which destroys the block block. The next time this area is loaded, the block is gone and the piranha plant is free to spawn. Bowser uses this trick in one way or another over a dozen times in this level and I won't discuss every single one of them. But if you want to check the level out and investigate for yourself, you can find the ID in the description. The next thing I quickly want to explain before finally talking about the don't run mechanism is this weird door. So Bowser structured the stage in a way in which Mario needs to first make his way to the right and then he needs to replay the same area but with a slightly changed layout coming from the left. So in order to make this work he needs to trap Mario at a certain point because otherwise the area to Mario's left would be reloaded and it would be possible to beat the stage by reloading the areas which would be against the core concept. But Bowser can't put a one way door here in order to trap Mario because our plumber needs to make it through this door on his way back. So this door is the solution to this problem. This door closes behind Mario the first time he walks through it and stays closed from then on until the room is reloaded. Then the door becomes inactive. So the way this works is a little bit too complicated for my likings. The forms drop down when Mario walks through and destroy the brick blocks here and the chain chomp. The chain chomp block the bullet blaster which then drops down and blocks the door. But if the door is reloaded, these shelmet launchers spawn and trigger the invisible blocks which prevents the bullet blaster from dropping down. We need the swamp and bullet blaster contraption here twice, once to the right and once to the left because of the loading priorities. Ok, so loading priorities. If we toy around with contraptions that use the off screen loading in Super Mario Maker, we have to be really careful what we do because one and the same contraption doesn't always behave the same way depending on how it was loaded. Let's take this super small contraption as an example. We have a muncher which drops down and a bullet blaster which moves to the left towards the muncher. Once we start the game, the muncher drops down and blocks the bullet blaster, right? Well, right. But what if Mario comes from the left? The muncher blocks the contraption like before, right? Well, wrong. The muncher lands on top of this contraption. So why does this happen? Well, here's the thing. The game loads everything which is currently inside of the horizontal camera borders plus 4 blocks to the right and 4 blocks to the left. So if Mario approaches this contraption from the left, the different parts of the contraption are loaded at different times. First, the muncher is loaded and drops down, but the blaster is only loaded once Mario is 2 blocks further to the right. But if Mario approaches the contraption from the right, the blaster is loaded first and gets transported on a conveyor belt. Then Mario goes another block to the left and the blaster is loaded once again, while the muncher still floats inactively in the air. Only when Mario goes another block to the left, the muncher is loaded, but at this point the bullet blaster is already below the muncher. That's cool, isn't it? But what's even cooler about this design is that we're actually able to use this muncher as the information from which side Mario approached an area of the stage. The collapsing brick block bridge at the beginning of the stage works exactly like this. This little contraption does nothing if it is loaded when Mario comes from its left, but triggers a P-switch when it is loaded while Mario approaches it from the right. Because of this, the brick block bridge only collapses the second time Mario is in this area. It's really important to keep the order in which objects are going to get loaded in mind for two reasons. First, it is incredibly easy to end up with a mechanism that bugs for no apparent reason and second, because it is really important to understand this in order to understand how the don't run mechanism works. Because now things become really, really weird. 
So, YouTube user Jared Wood recently left me a comment asking whether note blocks on tracks are loaded when on screen. And this is probably one of the most clever comments I've ever gotten, because the answer to this question is simply fantastic. The answer is yes and no. The block is loaded and unloaded at the same time. The block changes its behavior depending on if someone looks at it. It's basically Super Mario Maker quantum physics. And I love it. So here is what happens. This is what a don't run cell looks like. This mechanism triggers a P-switch when it is loaded while Mario runs and does nothing if it is loaded while Mario walks. The reason why this is possible is because the note block is actually half loaded when four blocks away from the camera, but only full loaded when inside the camera boundaries. The note block on tracks starts to move as soon as it is four blocks away, but the note block is only able to lose what's inside of it if it's inside the camera boundaries. It's in a really weird state where it is loaded and unloaded at the same time and as far as I know, no other entity in the game behaves like this. It is actually so weird that I believe it is intentional. So in order to avoid confusion, I'm going to refer to the different loading parts of the block as the track part of the note block and the content part of the note block for now. The magic trick is the following. The track part of the note block is loaded when the camera is four blocks away. Then the note block moves one block to the left and afterwards two blocks to the right. Then the muncher hits the note block. If only the track part is loaded, nothing happens. But if the content part is loaded as well, the P-switch is triggered. The thing is, if Mario walks, he moves so slowly that the content part is never loaded, which deactivates the contraption. But if Mario runs, the content part becomes visible and loaded and the lethal P-switch is triggered. That's so cool, but it gets even better, because the same is true if Mario approaches the cell from the other side. The content part is only loaded when Mario runs once again, which means this little contraption, which uses only four items that count towards the entity maximum, is a perfect don't run reviser for both directions. This game is so funky. But there are actually two limitations to this design. The first one is that Mario needs to start above the contraption, so that the camera moves from above on top of it, and not the other way around, because otherwise every cell is triggered immediately. And the contraption only checks Mario's speed for this exact camera position. If the camera is only one block higher or lower, it stops to work. Okay, so that's basically it. But before we end this video, I've got a small Mario Maker magic trick for you. So here are two blue platforms on top of tracks. If Mario triggers them both, they drop down. But if our plumber runs to the left of the map far enough that both platforms definitely get unloaded and then runs back to the platforms, one respawns while the other one does not. If someone of you knows how this works, feel free to leave a comment that explains this interesting little trick. I'll explain how this works at the end of our next video. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel like loading a new channel into your subscription feed by hitting the subscribe button as well. I hope you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!